Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic Up. Everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because today we are talking generators, inverters, power stations, power packs, everything you need to know. So why do I feel compelled to make this video today? To show you the differences in all these, the pros and cons of them, and how important they are to have? Well, it has to do a little bit with conspiracy. Now, all you guys know, I am not a conspiracy YouTube channel. There's plenty of them out there for you to find out all that juicy info, but I do know something and I want you to know about it too. In January of 2020, Netflix came out with a movie called Pandemic, and lo and behold, three months later, we had a global pandemic. Now, Netflix once again came out with a movie on Friday, December 8th, called Leave the World Behind, and it was about cyber attacks, mass power outages, chaos, destruction. And I know you're thinking, it's just a movie, right? Well, two days later, this breaking news comes out. <laughs> Hackers affiliated with China's People's Liberation Army have infiltrated critical services here in the U.S. So you go ahead and take it as you want, but I'm here to save you time, money, and frustration. And to be prepared like this, have insurance in yourself, can mean a world of difference. And for all you new people, excuse the shop. Um, everybody that's been watching my videos knows we just moved everything in here from our other shop and it's still a chaotic mess. So the first thing I want to go over with you is wattage. Now you can see on my big... Black Max here, it's 7,000 running watts, 8,750 starting watts. You've got the Craftsman here, it says it's a 3,300. You've got the Generac here that also says it is a 3,300. But there's a huge difference in these two and I wanna show you why. When we come around to the Generac, you can see it says it's a 3,300, which it has 3,300 running watts but 3750 starting watts, okay? So while it's running, it's running, it can power 3300 watts. Now, even though the Craftsman says it's a 3300, it actually is 3300 starting and 2500 ru running watts. So it's a huge difference. I mean, that's 800 watts of power between these two. So they might look like they're the same amount of power, but they're not. Now deciding on how many watts you need, that's the next step. So first you decide what is most important to you. Obviously a refrigerator, or do you have a standing freezer? Are you on oxygen? Do you have an oxygen machine that needs to be run? You're gonna wanna have lights, hopefully. You're going to, you know, might wanna run a TV. All of these things need to be factored in to when you decide what size generator you need. So we know for sure that everybody wants to run a refrigerator when the power's out. Well, how many watts does a refrigerator use? A lot of times when you buy a refrigerator, it will come with a sheet of paper that says, you know, all the information about the energy. But sometimes you throw that piece of paper away, so you really have no idea. Now, just it's a well-known fact that most refrigerators run about 800 watts. Sometimes you don't know the watts, though, and it might give you just the amps. To figure out any wattage usage when it comes to only having the amp number, all you have to do is multiply it by whatever, you know, circuit you're using. If it's a 120 circuit, you multiply, like say a refrigerator uses seven amps, you multiply seven by 120, you get 840 amps or 840 watts. That's how much uh, power that that refrigerator needs. If you, you know, is a 240 or a 220, you still do the same thing. You multiply the amps by whatever circuit you're using and that's how you find out your watts. So once you've decided on how many watts you need to use during a power outage, that's when you decide, you know, what generator or inverter that you're going to purchase. And it does decide on how much money you want to spend, but at the same time, this is insurance. Insurance that you're going to be safe and warm or cool and fed during a power outage. So it's definitely something worth investing in. Now we decided to go with the Black Max 7,000 running watts powered by Honda. We plug this thing directly to our house with a designated uh, generator plug. We put it in when we were building the house. That way we can discriminate on exactly which circuits we want to run in the house. We can, you know, do entire rooms, entire sections of the house. Now, none of these are going to run your home's AC and heater units because they are just, they just take way too many watts to run. So you're going to want to make sure that you have some fans around the house or some portable heaters because they, these will run those all day long, but they do not run entire house units. Now, having a designated circuit like this, I'm able to plug it up to like uh, the area that powers my water heater. Now, whenever I do the water heater, though, I have to unhook other areas of the house because it takes a lot of wattage to run the water heater. 
So what's the difference in all these, the pros and cons, and which one should you get? So let's start out with some of the pros first for a very large generator. First off, you're gonna be able to power a lot of things. If it happens to be powered by Honda, a lot of times you can get parts pretty cheap. Usually when it comes to these bigger generators, they are powered by a manufacturer that makes good quality equipment. When you have a generator this big, it holds a lot of fuel, so a lot of times you can just fill it up get it running and forget about it for a while. On top of that, a ton of them come with the electric start, so you don't gotta pull over and over again to get it started. Now there are some cons with this. First off, the thing is super, super loud. It's also big and bulky, so you have to have somewhere, you know, it takes up a lot of space to store it. Not only that, it does come with a battery for the electric start, but every time you go to use it, it seems like your battery is dead. So keeping up with the battery charge is tasking. Then it is gas powered. You're gonna have to worry about that. If you leave it sitting for too long of a time, it's not gonna run when you come back to it. So you always have to maintain it. And also it can cause issues if it's not running correctly. If it's running too slow or too fast, it could be either putting out not enough voltage to run the things that you need it to, or if it's running too fast, it can blow things up with too much voltage. So you think you don't need that much wattage, you boost down just a little bit. What are the pros and cons of something a little bit smaller? First off, some of the pros is it's much smaller, so it's more compact, easier to move around, and much lighter. You are lacking, you know, at least half the power that you are going to get with one of these bigger units. You're probably not going to have electric start on it. And usually when you buy something of this caliber, it's going to have some Chinese knockoff engine on it that it's usually hard to get parts for. But one huge bonus when having a unit like this is everything is out in the open, so they're sort of really easy to work on if you do have issues. All right, last but not least, let's talk about storage when it comes to gas-powered machines, because we all know these things are going to be sitting for 99.9% .9 of the time. And when you have units like this, you have a lot of gas in the gas tank. I mean, what do you do? Now, I've always told you if it's a smaller machine, like a two-cycle, two-stroke, you're going to want to leave either a heavy oil mix in it or straight two-cycle oil if you're going to store it for a very long time because it'll keep all the diaphragms in your carburetor, your fuel lines, everything really pliable. So when you go to run it again, it will run for you. Now, these are a little different. I'm going to tell you the way I do it because it's worked. I do use a fuel stabilizer. And I know a lot of you out there are going to say it's snake oil, but I use ethanol shield. Whether it is attributed to my machines running every time I go to start them up, I don't know, but they do. So <laughs> a lot of people out there, they say they use stable. Now, the only difference with stable though, ethanol shield actually mixes with the gas. Stable sits on top of the gas. So it works like in boats or generators if you're going to let it sit and not let it move around and be sloshed at all. Because like it, I, I never would use stable in my actual gas can because it's moved around all the time. And what stable does, it sits on the top of the gas and doesn't let any oxygen come through. So if it gets sloshed, the oxygen comes through and it doesn't work. Now, when you get done using your generator, you're going, most all of them have a fuel shut off right on the tank you're going to turn the fuel off and you're gonna let it run until it dies. Now it will still have a little tiny bit of fuel in the, in the carburetor and you'll have your fuel in your gas tank. Hopefully you've got a stabilizer that's gonna keep that for a while. Ideally, you do wanna start your generator up every 30 to 60 days. No one ever does that. <laughs> So uh, what I find is if it only has a little tiny remnants of gas in the carburetor, usually that fresh fuel that I start it with the next time will flush whatever was in there out and it'll start up and run. Next, we got inverters, which are pretty sweet when they're running. First, the big one is they are way quieter than these other ones back here. They're compact and easy to store. Now, another cool thing, this thing has a constant power supply, which means that the generator creates AC, which rectifies into DC, which inverts it back into AC, which means it has a constant voltage. So it doesn't matter what the RPMs of the engine is, it's, it's still putting out 120 volts. Now, another good thing about this is how much gas it consumes. Even though it doesn't hold much fuel, it doesn't use as much because it has an electronic governor control on it that regulates how fast the RPMs are going depending on what load is on it. So because of this, it's able to idle down when it needs to and save on fuel consumption. Now some of the cons. Because it's able to idle down like that, it can cause issues with the spark arrestor screen inside of your muffler. Not like these boys. These boys are going to be loud, full throttle all the time, burning that carbon up. But because it idles, it won't burn the carbon off correctly if it idles too much. If you have any issues where you've got to get inside of the carburetor, even if you break your pull rope, you have to tear this entire thing apart. We hate seeing these come in for repair because a lot of times, even I had a customer come in, it was a broken pull rope and you think, oh, just to fix a pull rope, that's not much. 
four hours later after you've dismantled the entire thing because it's an entirely closed system. You have to take everything apart just to get to it. And the pull rope is right here in the center. So you have to sometimes remove the entire front of the engine or remove the generator part just to change the pull rope. If anything happens internally, you're paying a ton of labor to have it fixed. And last, we're gonna go over battery inverters. Now I'll start with a small one. I have a 750 watt power inverter right here. This one just plugs straight up to a 12 volt battery. Um, you're not gonna get much out of this, but still, if you wanna run a couple lamps, charge your phone, you know, charge your computer, something like that, this is excellent for that because all you gotta do is plug it to a battery and it'll give you some power. And now to these that I left for last because these are pretty sweet. These are battery inverters. Now I have a 2400 watt and an 1800 watt and the brand I chose was Oops, Oopes. I don't know how to say it, but I, I loved the 1800 watt so much that I got the 2400 watt. Now there are pros and cons with it. I'm gonna go over the cons first because the pros seriously outweigh the cons on these things. First one is they're super duper expensive. You are going to drop a dime to get them. They are small and compact, so they're not going to have the same wattage as any of these big generators are. And third, they're powered with lithium battery. And if you've seen my videos, you know what I feel about lithium batteries, how unsafe they are to keep in your home. So you do need to store it somewhere away from any kind of building. Now for the pros, because there are oh so many. First off, the most obvious one, you don't have to worry about gas and oil or it sitting for a year and having to go have it repaired because the gas went bad in it. That's like the most awesome perk to it. Also, the runtime on a full charge, this thing will keep running forever. I had my son's 5000 BTU window unit in his bedroom running for six hours in the middle of July when our power was off for 15 hours and the thing just chucked along for six hours. I was completely impressed with it. It has tons of ports for whatever you could possibly need. And on top of that, this particular brand is solar powered. So you don't have to rely on, you know, charging it from electricity in your home. If you run out of power, you can buy, depending on how much money you want to drop, they have different size solar panels and different amounts that you can just tether together to recharge these just from the sun. How awesome is that? They're super compact, light, they're easy to store, do not store them in your house, but when it comes to taking them on the go, we use them for mobile repair. All you gotta do is throw it in the back of your trunk and you're ready to go. On top of that, you charge them up and you forget about them. You don't have to worry about if you have power or if you have gasoline or anything like that. They will hold a charge for a good couple years and be fully charged whenever you need to use them. And like the other inverter, it gives a constant power supply. So you don't have to worry about highs, lows, or you know, getting too much voltage or not. It's gonna give you a constant supply. So I gotta say, if you can drop a dime, I highly recommend these. So guys, that's about it. You know, I'm not a conspiracy YouTube channel. I'm not a political YouTube channel, but I do keep up with everything. And with a platform like this, sometimes I feel obligated to uh, remind everybody to invest in yourself, give yourself a little self-assurance and a peace of mind. Um, if you don't have a generator, you might want to get one. I will leave links to everything I can find in the description box below. Thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic. Find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.